Good morning. Most of the developed world is on 5G telecommunications networks, and the race is on now to build 6G. The difference between 5G and 6 is orders of magnitude increases in speed and in applications. One terabyte per second is a thousand times faster than one gigabyte per second, which is what you might have if you pay a very high premium for connection speed at your house or your office. And it's Chinese companies who have a big head start on building the tech for 6G. Analysts know that the outcome of this is going to decide almost everything else. Economic competitiveness, productivity, national security, healthcare and medicine, transportation, education, AI, manufacturing, robotics, self-driving vehicles, aviation. China owns the infrastructure and manufacturing and supply chains and ecosystems for the 5G networks today. Chinese companies have 70% of the base stations worldwide and they build 80% of the 5G devices. And China's strategy in 6G is to emulate their success in 5G. Chinese companies have most of the market now for the semiconductors needed for the industry. And they also own most of the patents for artificial intelligence. China then has a big edge in setting the global standards for the telecom providers in 6G everywhere else because it's China who's building the plumbing for it. Huawei is a Chinese company, so is ZTE. Both Huawei and ZTE are under heavy sanctions by Western governments, and the United States and big chunks of Europe are not allowed to buy telecom equipment from those Chinese firms. But Huawei is growing anyway in the rest of the world. Outside China, Huawei is growing market share, while Nokia, in second place globally, is falling. Notice two of the companies on this chart. The American companies there are Cisco, Sienna, and Juniper, who combine for under 10% of the global market share for telecom equipment. Nokia and Ericsson are European companies. And that's a big problem because the world is splitting apart. In 6G, for example, China and the United States have big ambitions to build 6G but in Europe, not so much. That puts Nokia and Ericsson in a bad position. Those companies are getting killed in China by Huawei and ZTE, and Huawei is booking much higher sales across the world than Ericsson or Nokia, even though Huawei is locked out of North America and Europe. Ericsson's sales were down 5% last year. Nokia's sales down 9%. Research and development spending at Huawei for the year was over $25 billion, compared to under $11 billion for Ericsson and Nokia combined. A big challenge for the American and European companies is that all of the growth in telecom is happening outside their markets. Global industry revenues are growing slowly, just 2.9% across the world through the next five years. That's below the inflation rate. As a result, almost all the cash generated gets gobbled up by capex, dividends, and interest payments. That means we get stories like this one from Nokia. Nokia's equipment sourcing costs are rising because they get a fourth of their equipment from China, which come in with high tariffs if they're installed in the US or Europe. Net sales are falling and their margins are falling by a lot. Even so, Nokia's free cash flow was $700 million. What did Nokia do next? The company took all that money to buy back $703 million worth of their own shares, signaling confidence in its liquidity. Okay, but that's what free cash flow is, it's liquidity. If you want to signal confidence in the company's ability to compete and grow in new markets, executives could have plowed that into research and development or in acquisitions that could fuel growth in their markets elsewhere. Now the liquidity's gone, along with the money. 
There is some good news back here on this Price Waterhouse report. In lots of countries with big populations, demand for telecom is growing. The farther to the right we move on this chart, you get faster year-over-year -year growth in telecom. Remember, the global average will come in under 3%, but India will see over 20% growth year-over-year. Year. Nigeria will be over 11%. Japan, on the other hand, their telecom industry is shrinking. Looking at these countries here on the right of the 2% line, in North America and Europe only, the UK is in that batch. Brazil, UAE, MENA is Middle East, North Africa, Malaysia, Chile, Turkey, Nigeria, Kenya, Pakistan. Azerbaijan is a tiny market. And then India, of course. The fastest growing telecom markets also happen to be the fastest growing economy. And it's in those markets that Huawei is already making all their money anyway. What all that means for the 6G race is that Huawei and ZTE, plus the industrial base of Chinese tech and telecom companies, are building all the telecom systems in Asia, South America, and in Africa. And it's this map here, again. The BRICS economic bloc is going to have 6G built by China and rolled out across the world. The countries that sign up to using Chinese equipment and plug into 6G networks will vault ahead of Europe, where even their own companies can't make money in 5G. The BRICS will have world-class manufacturing, smart factories, self-driving cars, telemedicine, smart agriculture, these are things that happen when corporate executives take cash flows to invest and grow instead of buying back their own shares. So this is another race that's already over because Western companies didn't even show up. This is Chichikou, Chichikou ancient town in Chongqing. Be good. No man comes to the Father but by me. Everyone who hears these words of Jesus and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and that the house did not fall, but was found on the rock. Our Father, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.